Now then, people, welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. It is Thursday, the 19th of August, and it's back. It's another episode of the Daily Leads. And finally, finally, we have a new player linked that, <laughs> that we can speak about that we've never spoken about before. It was getting like Groundhog Day at times. I hope you enjoyed yesterday's opposition preview with Mike from the Blue Boys Network. Make sure you subscribe to their channel. The link is in the description on that video. Please, if you haven't watched it already, Go and check it out if you can. Today is, of course, Thursday. Um, so we will have, before the whistle blows, later on this evening at 8 o'clock, looking ahead to all the Premier League games of the weekend. So make you join. Uh, make sure you join us for that. And I'll be pre-recording a little uh, Everton preview with a very good friend of mine um, that I'll be putting out Friday as well for you to check out. So, yeah, uh, I won't tell you who it is yet, but it's a good guest. It's a good guest. Um, but that's enough uh, rambling from me. As always, smash a like, subscribe, comment, and get that notification bell smashed. And let's get into today's video. So, guys, as promised, we have a new player to finally speak about. It was getting like Groundhog Day. Gons Lewis O'Brien, Gons Mateus Kuna, Noah Lang, Rodrigo de Paul, Tony Yaboa, Gordon Strachan, you know, <laughs> just constant same names all the time. Um, I don't, although I don't think Lewis O'Brien's quite gone, so we're going to speak about him in a second. But we're going to speak about a new link player, Josh Brownell, uh, formerly of Bristol City, now at Burnley. Apparently, Leeds United and Marcelo Bielsa rate him very highly. 25-year-old, not short of admirers. Um, we know that West Ham boss David Moyes has been watching him very closely. Uh, and Moyes sees him as an ideal long-term replacement for Mark Noble. Um, the thing is with this, it's going to be difficult for Leeds United to prize him away from Burnley. And he would demand a big fee. They paid £10 million for him uh, from Bristol City. And it's now likely, believed to be anyway in the reports, at least 50% uh, higher than that, you know. So you, you, you're looking at 50, 15 million, you know. 50, I thought I said 50 then, definitely not 50. <laughs> 15 million. And um, look, I think the one we want is Lewis O'Brien. Maybe it's a little bit of kidology from Leeds United putting an, another name out there in the mix to try and force Huddersfield's hand. Um, you can't tell me that Leeds United are going to fork out fifteen million from for Josh Brownhill if they can get Lewis O'Brien for between seven and ten. It just doesn't make sense. I think maybe it's been put out there in the ether to maybe put the shits up Huddersfield to see if they react and accept our bid, which apparently will be going in very very soon for seven million for Lewis O'Brien. And the thing is with Josh Brownhill, great player. Um, again, very versatile in the middle of the park, which is what Bielsa likes. He likes versatility. He can see the type of midfielder he's he's going after. A la Con. <laughs> Connor Gallagher, Lewis O'Brien, and of course, Josh Brownell. Do you know what I as well? <laughs> I said to myself this year, I'm going to try and squeeze Connor Gallagher into every video I do. <laughs> it's a bit like uh, it's becoming my catchphrase now. It's not just now, then people, it's now Connor Gallagher as well. So I'm going to see if I can shoehorn him into every single episode uh, that I do. So keep your eyes peeled on that. Um, but no, you can see the type of midfielder that we're after. It was reported whether or not Leeds wanted him in addition to O'Brien. Um, however, maybe as well as O'Brien. However, look, Leeds United are spending more sensibly this summer. Um, some would say really poorly. <laughs> but it is what it is. Look, Josh Brownell has been linked. It's one to keep our eyes on. But I think the main one is, of course, Lewis O'Brien. Um, Phil Hay confirmed that fact. You know, Graham Smith's confirmed that fact. And apparently it's been reported now at The Telegraph that £7 million fee has actually been agreed between the two clubs. I find that hard to believe that it's been agreed just as of yet because he just played yesterday. Whether or not Leeds United would probably mind that, maybe not. You know what Bielsa's is like. They said, no. I want him to play for you, Carlos. Get some minutes in his legs. Um, but it looks like a, a, a £7 million bid has been readied. Um, Telegraph are saying it's been agreed. We haven't heard it from the local journals as of yet. But look, it looks like that bid's going in. And, you know, I, I, I think it's a figure and it's a fee that, that will likely be accepted, especially now with the links to Josh Brownell. Maybe it might force Huddersfield's hand a little bit. We will... Have to wait and see. The Telegraph also are reporting um, that Patrick Bamford is set to 
snub Tottenham Hotspur and sign a new deal at Leeds United. Obviously, he has less than 12 months remaining on his contract. Um, however, according to fresh reports, Bamford has uh, said he is happy and really wants to remain at Leeds. And the club are hopeful of signing him on a new long-term contract in the near future. I don't think he was ever um, leaving Leeds United, nor was I ever worried that Tottenham were genuinely going to put a bid in for Patrick Bamford. Um, I just don't see it. You know, I, I took, I seen a few comments where I said I don't think he was quite a top six striker, and some people going, "What do you mean he's got a lot of goals?" Da, 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 da. But I just couldn't see him being the man to replace Harry Kane. And if you're being honest with yourself, I think you probably would agree with me. Um, we're now going to go back to a name that's constantly linked. It is, of course, Ryan Kent. Apparently, Leeds have been dealt a blow in their pursuit of Rangers starman. Uh, Ryan Kent, because Rangers and Steven Gerrard's side have set an asking price of 15 million, which is believed to be a bridge too far for Leeds United. Uh, so, despite their failure to qualify for the Champions League, they still want 15 million for him. We didn't give them 10 million last time. So, whether or not we'd be willing to, to give them 15, it doesn't look like that's the case. It seems that Leeds United are really being tight this window. <laughs> um, but, you know, the mad thing is with Bielsa as well. Let's not forget he did that story where he once signed a player uh, and told them that you shouldn't have signed him for that much and actually went to that player and, looked, although I wanted you, you were not worth the transfer fee that we paid for you. So I wonder if he has any sort of um, saying in the, uh, in, in the transfers in that respect and says, you know what, he's not worth that, don't pay that. Be interesting, wouldn't it? Um, we're now going to speak about uh, Jan Carlos Ian Perverde. He's got so many names. And he's had so many clubs as well. And why is that, you ask? You know, who knows? You know, I don't know the guy personally, but he's been at Brentford, Barcelona, City, Chelsea, uh, Arsenal. He's played for a lot of clubs now. Of course, Leeds United as well. Um, and Football Insider, look, I'm not saying it's always 100% Bob on. That's far from it. But it is being reported that Pervera could be on his way out of Ellen Road after a fallout with head coach Marcelo Bielsa. Look, Graham Smith, Phil Hay, they've all come out and said, yes, he is now available for loan. Let's not forget, you know, he was left out of the under-23 squad for the game against Crystal Palace, was left out of the Premier League squads, didn't feature often enough during pre-season. Um, and let's not forget, he, he, he had a lot of Premier League appearances. You know, he made 14... Premier League appearances last season, but he's been missing from both squads that travelled to Old Trafford and Matt Jackson's under-23 squad. We've not seen him in, you know, pre-season training videos. And I said this, you know, I said this a couple of weeks ago, and I've said it on a number of times. Pervedia is that looks like, and again, I'm casting aspersions, probably shouldn't do it because I don't know him personally, but he looks like a guy that would not take any shit, not take any flack. And what I mean by that is if he doesn't agree with something and he's being told to do a certain thing, then I can imagine he'd be like, nah, it's not happening. We've seen that, you know, we know there was question marks over his time at City for his attitude. Um, <clears throat> maybe he thinks his worth is much bigger than what it actually is, that he should be getting more get I, 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 Look, I don't know, nor do we know, but what we do know is that he's now available for loan and we've not seen him. We've not seen him. Now, to be honest, I still have question marks over his long-term quality anyway. I don't know if he's got quite the stature. And I know that's mad because you see smaller. I just don't see it. A lot of flicks and tricks, but no end product for the small bits we've seen. And as we know, some of those gone ahead of both him and Costa for us. And I think that'll soon be for Bielsa as well. The fact that he only played 45 minutes in the under-23s, I think there's a chance we see him at the weekend. If indeed we, you know, he'll be on the bench because we can name nine. I mean, Forshaw's been put on the bench and he's half broke. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting one. We'll pervade more will be revealed, I guess. But look, he's placed at, he's played at a host of clubs, moved around a lot. Why is that? I don't know. I don't know. Um, but apparently Leeds United are willing to listen to offers for the 21-year-old who joined, obviously, from Manchester City back in January 2020. It's clear the kid's got bags of potential. Just has he got the attitude to fulfil it? But then again, this could all be BS. But there is still something. You've got to 
think what's going on there. Something has gone on because he's just dropped off the face of the earth. Be interesting to see if he does get a loan, where he goes out on loan. I, I'd imagine it'd be a championship club that would be willing to would be willing to take him. Um, just in terms of players exiting Leeds United, we heard yesterday that Sunderland are in advance talks to sign Leeds United defender Niall Huggins. Blackburn and Blackpool have also shown interest in his services, but it looks like Sunderland uh, are, are, are the favourites at this moment in time, the League One club, and apparently it'll be a permanent deal from Sunderland as well. I believe the other two are loans, so I think maybe the club will look more to um, the permanent, uh, you know, uh, departure of Niall, Niall Huggins, so good luck. Also, Bryce Susanna and Robbie Gotts could both be following in. Uh, clubs at League One le- level have made uh, plenty of inquiries about who's Hosanna. Um, he was at Bradford City previously, but obviously he got injured, meant he had to come back, but he's fully fit now. Um, and the likes of, uh, I think, Motherwell, Oldham, Salford and Stockport have all expressed uh, expressed an interest in Robbie Gotts. Nothing in- imminent as of yet, but, but both clearly going to leave, along with Niall Huggins. And they're players that also we haven't seen in pre-season. Again, similar to Perveda. So we'll have to watch this space. Um, looks like they will be exiting very, very soon. And I know Robbie, uh, and he's a great lad as well. So I hope, you know, I spoke to him when he moved to Salford and he said, you know, he was a little bit worried about how the Leeds fans would react with the Manchester United links, etc. But I was like, yo, Robbie, it doesn't really matter because you're going to, to get game time, etc. And that's all he wanted. That is all he wanted. He just wanted to play football at that stage of his career. So at least he's got a you know a number of options open to him. Um, now just to move on to some other news. It was quite funny, actually, uh, whether you agree or disagree with giving stick to pundits, especially those that have been ex-players at certain clubs and you, don't, you dislike them. But apparently the Premier League is to launch new Purple Zone after Old Trafford unrest. Um, you remember when Leeds United were everyone's second favourite team? And I always said when we get back in grounds, that'll quick change. And it already has started to change, guys, because apparently Sky, BT Sport and other broadcasters struggled with their interviews on Saturday because of the noise. And a number of viewers complained they could not hear the post-match interviews during Leeds' defeat at Old Trafford um, <laughs> due to fans still lingering in the stadium. Um, I know Rio Ferdinand took a bit of flack, etc. Um, and apparently clubs are now growing increasingly worried that supporters could stay in grounds and direct their frustration towards players and managers before and after games while doing their media duties. I mean, if someone has a grab to bear, they're there to be shot at in respect if your manager's not doing well. Um, but apparently the Premier League are going to conjure up new guidelines, which will include setting up a new zone in the tunnel and media rooms access for broadcasters, which will allow interviews to be done away from the pitch, which I think is a little bit harsh. Um, I, there was nothing more than I, you know, than I can remember when Michael Brown bounced that ball off uh, off Martin Keown's head that time in the uh, FA Cup. But uh, look, I think it's a bit of a shame that they're going to do that because I think it's all banter, it's all thing. But yeah, Leeds United are back. The vile animals are back, and straight away. Uh, the Premier League have made a decision. I think it might come in from October that they're going to now start doing post-match interviews, etc., in the tunnel to protect their players. As if they're not protected enough. It's all harmless, isn't it? It's all a bit of fun. Um, and just for those that are going to Ellen Road on Saturday, uh, cashless transactions are being encouraged. There is also a potential for pre-order points introduced around the concourse. So if you were to pre-order, you get points, basically. Um, so with the return of fans on Saturday, we are pleased to confirm that Ellen Road will become the latest stadium to move toward going cashless as we look to develop the club's match day experience. It says, so from this weekend, fans will notice the introduction of pre-order points around the concourse, allowing fans to purchase their food and drinks in a quicker and more efficient way. I'm not too sure that'll work. (laughs) I've been at Ellen Road. It's a nightmare. But let's hope it does work. The touchscreen terminals will allow supporters to place their order easily with designated collection points in action. To celebrate the launch of the pre-order points, fans will receive 10% off orders using the machine. 
So if you are a Leeds United fan and you are going to Ellen Road on Saturday and you fancy getting yourself a beer, a coat, a drink, whatever, you can go to these pre-order points, you get 10% off as well. So that's uh, a positive, isn't it? Let's just see how it actually works in action. I can imagine this 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 part where you've got this young and we know what the lads are like and lasses that work at Ellen Road, they're just doing a job. I feel a bit sorry for them at times. But all these pints and people just coming over and going, that's mine, mate. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You go over and say, where's my beers? Oh, someone's talking. Yeah, it'll be carnage. It'll be carnage. Much like it is on this show, to be fair. Yeah, it never goes wrong, does it? <laughs> no, but listen... Honestly, thank you so much. Watch out for Before the Whistle Blows at 8 o'clock. Tomorrow we'll have a preview of the Everton game with a very special guest. Thank you, as always, for watching the Just Your Football Show. It's an absolute pleasure doing this. Uh, please smash a like, subscribe, comment, and hit that notification bell. And I'll see you in a bit now. Peace out. Lee, Lee, Lee.